Karl Marx was born in 1818 in Trier, Prussia. Uh, he studied law and philosophy and had been fond of discussing Hegel, who was popular at the time but grew to disagree with many of Hegel's beliefs on human consciousness and Christianity. He was introduced to leftism by interacting with other students of Hegel, and at one point was a member of the Young Hegelians, who were uh, individuals who interpreted Hegel's philosophy from a leftist perspective, possibly due to disagreements uh, on interpretation between himself and utopian socialists. Um, he grew to distance himself from this group, uh, that is, until he met Friedrich Engels, uh, particularly for the second time in 1844. Marx had recently been exposed to Engels' book, The Conditions of the Working Class in England, uh, and on their second meeting became persuaded that socialism would be brought about not through uh, top-down methods, but through a revolution of the working class. Following this revelation, Marx began to read more on economics and French socialism, and steadily began to compile a theory which became known as Marxism. By the end of 1844, he had finished an unpublished document titled Economic and Philosophical Manuscripts. One of the manuscripts contained this document that was titled Estranged Labor. The document begins with a discussion of how the establishment of private property, profit, and other facets of capitalist economics make the worker themselves a commodity, as their labor is bought and sold for a fluctuating exchange value. This means that society can be easily divided into two groups, uh, the property owners and the property less workers. A study of political economy, also known as economics, can teach us this, but it does not do a good job of explaining why this is the case. Marx criticizes economists for claiming the estrangement of labor from profit has existed since time immemorial as this, once again, does nothing to explain its cause. It's sort of like saying um, that life on Earth began as a result of being seeded from uh, alien planets, also known as panspermia. I mean, this does nothing to explain how life arose to begin with. It's sort of just kicking the can further down the road. He goes on to explain that when labor produces a commodity through labor that is estranged, thus also commodified, that the product is treated as being alien to the labor that made it. This is contradictory to the fact that commodities are effectively made of labor. If it were not for labor, uh, the products would not be made, right? The effect of this is that labor's own production becomes hostile to it, as the products made by laborers are not owned by them, so they must acquire them for exchange value at the market. Because work is traditionally supposed to allow the worker to appropriate materials from the environment for the purposes of survival, it becomes threatening to their existence when this ceases to be the case. Marx calls the worker a slave of his object, meaning it becomes necessary for the worker to produce commodities in order to survive. He says that economic thought typically does not consider how commodities are only made because the workers are made to do the labor to produce them. He claims that this situation is dehumanizing essentially because people cannot work directly to satisfy a need, but must work to satisfy a need external to their need for which they're then compensated so that they might purchase commodities. So thus far we have this estrangement in terms of uh, the relationship between the product and the worker, and we also have the relationship of uh, the labor to the productive activity. The worker does not own the product, and labor is not allowed to do the kind of productive activity that would actually provide immediate sustenance to human life. There's also a third form of estrangement, which is related to man as a species being, as Marx calls it, uh, which basically just means that um, an organism has to manipulate matter in order to survive and reproduce. This is kind of the basic mission of existence, right? By making it more difficult for people to satisfy their immediate needs without participating in alienating labor, uh, they are also alienated from this natural tendency towards self-sustenance. This has the effect of turning us from species into individuals with divided goals. We become alienated from our imperative as a species, right, to like work together to produce goods, to survive and reproduce. Marx says that what separates humans from other animals is uh, the conscious awareness of life activity, which is, you know, that struggle for survival. This consciousness only really occurred because of humans' needs to survive, right? We sort of evolved this intellect. So estranged labor has the effect of ripping away what freedom can be gained from the consciousness of productivity because it denies us of the liberty that we evolved, especially as a result of being clever enough to make things, right? Like, our ability to produce things in excess and surplus evolved uh, as a means for ensuring that humans could have more time to indulge our consciousness. And under capitalism, the result is that humans just have more time to indulge ourselves in alienating labor. As he has alluded to previously, this dissolution of the species uh, has the effect of pitting people against each other. Having established this, he asks, if working people are estranged from their labor, who owns that labor? Uh, and he then goes on to say that the non-workers own it. This non-worker forces the worker from freedom by possessing the product of their labor, and their labor itself. And this is the fourth manner in which estrangement is occurring. It occurs between workers and non-workers. Marx then reminds us what he says at the beginning, which is that private property is the consequence of this, not the cause, as it allows the capitalist to concentrate wealth by controlling the distribution of commodities. Wages are a direct product of private property, and thus the forcing up of wages does nothing to resolve the actual conflict, which is the estrangement of labor. This does mean, however, that questioning the source of alienated labor is the same as questioning the source of private property. 
And the cause of private property is the benefit that comes from appropriation, right? Appropriation from other people. This is a fancy way of saying that estrangement of labor happens because some people are self-centered and want the benefits of work without actually doing the work. He concludes by stating three maxims. Firstly, that what appears to the worker is an alienating activity outside of themselves um, appears to the non-worker as a state, right? Like, it's, it's natural to the non-worker for this to be the case, and they identify the system as being um, congruent with their own identity, whereas the the worker sees the work that they do for the non-worker as being outside of themselves, right? They are only allowed to indulge themselves in activities which are not immediately related to serving a non-worker. Secondly, that the mindset of the worker in regard to their relation to what they produce is real to them, but theoretical to the non-worker as in they do not believe it themselves, right? And thirdly, that the non-worker operates against the worker just as the worker might operate against another worker, but no non-worker would ever operate against the interests of another non-worker. So here, Marx is saying that in the natural world, man is supposed to make what is needed to survive. When you make him work for the production of private property, everything gets really messed up. Uh, this is antithetical to how humans derive meaning from existence, and it happens because uh, certain individuals have found that they can benefit from immiserating others. They perpetuate the system by crafting an ideology that they espouse but don't really embrace themselves. Once humans are no longer making what is needed to survive and they are making what is needed to generate profit, a conflict is set in motion between working people and also between working people and non-workers. The takeaway should be that to Marx, working for wages is inherently problematic. In order to realize ourselves as a species, a uh, collective, we need to abolish wages, meaning that we need to abolish private property. Uh, this is a short read and it's kind of interesting because it wasn't really intended to be published. You can kind of see the formation of Marxist theory in the pages. Uh, it's a little disorganized, the wording is a little different from later Marxist literature, but in some respects I kind of like the differences in word choice. I definitely enjoy how Marx consistently calls the bourgeoisie non-workers in this document. I feel like that's a more appropriate term for it than the French term for middle-class townspeople. Um, I can see why maybe he changed it because it can be confusing in other respects, but it's just a preference of mine. Anyway, I hope uh, you give it a try, and if you do, happy reading.